Now, if you guys are excited for Dallas Cowboys training camp, then like today's video. We've got some training camp battles on defense to keep an eye out for. I can't wait for camp to go. We have a ton of coverage for you guys. Like the video right now. All right, first up on the camp battles for defense, I'm going to look at the edge number three spot. And I think it'd be a good thing if there is competition at the position. Obviously, Micah Parsons and Tank Lawrence are going to be your top two edges at this position. They're not going to be taken over anytime soon, at least for a year, I suppose. Dorrance Armstrong, Sam Williams, and Dante Fowler stand out to me as the three guys potentially competing for that quote-unquote number three role, acknowledging it's going to be a rotation amongst those guys either way. I am excited to see what Sam Williams can do entering year two. He showed some real promise last year with nine TFLs. He was way better as a run defender than what I thought he was going to be in his second season, uh, or in his first year. The sack numbers have the potential to do even more. He has the ability to emerge as a premier football player from that perspective. Uh, Dante Fowler, we'll go to him next, then we'll go to Dorrance Armstrong. Dante Fowler had six sacks last season. The problem is, much like him and Dorrance Armstrong, he did not have the most successful end-of-season stretch. He didn't emerge as a reliable piece, and frankly, in the playoff game against the 49ers, he did not have much of it. He only played a handful of snaps from that perspective. So I think Fowler is definitely third on this list behind Sam Williams, and probably the favorite still, which is Dorrance Armstrong. Dorrance Armstrong is the next best option there for the Cowboys. He showed a lot of promise last year. And there's, oh, oh I meant to do this as the stat. Hold on, I have it here for you guys. Uh, I meant to make this the graphic, but I never actually built it. So that, that one's on me, but I have the numbers here. Dorrance Armstrong has had a 20-game a stretch from 2021 Week 9 to 2022 Week 12. That, those 20 games, 53 tackles, 11 TFLs, 13 sacks, 23 quarterback hits, and three forced fumbles. In the other 56 games of his career, so the beginning and the back end of last season, 75 tackles, five TFLs, three sacks, 13 quarterback hits, and one forced fumble. Which Dorrance Armstrong shows up this year? That 20-game stretch where he's, a, he's kind of pushing Pro Bowl numbers or the other 56 games where he's been a non-factor? Maybe the answer is somewhere in the middle, but I am curious which one shows up at camp this year. So who ends up getting more sacks for the Cowboys at edge this season? SW for Sam Williams, DA for Dorrance Armstrong, DF for Dante Fowler. It is the pinned comment on today's show. So if the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it, head down there, and go vote. I think an under-the-radar camp battle actually should be the starting nose guard. I think in the end, and I think we all want, Mozzie Smith to emerge as the number one run-stopping DT on this team. But that doesn't mean it is a guaranteed lock at this stage for him to emerge in that position, in that grouping, as the go-to guy there. I don't think you can rule out Jonathan Hankins, at least for the beginning of the season. Osa's going to start at one DT spot. There's depth battles going on there as well. And I'm going to put Mozzie as the starting nose guard, defensive tackle number two, but I don't think you can rule out Hankins. I, I am excited about Mozzie Smith as a Dallas Cowboy. How can I be mad? For years, I advocated for fatties up front. Advocated, advocated and the Cowboys finally did it. His numbers are not that impressive. He didn't have any real pass rush plan for his own words, but I think he's a really good run stopper with the athletic traits that are really intriguing. But he is still a rookie. We haven't seen him yet with the pads on. Hankins is the veteran, and the Cowboys defense last season with Hankins out there was incredibly better against the run than when it was Quinton Bohanna, Neville Gallimore, et cetera. Hankins being out there helped the Cowboys' defense. I think early in the year, at minimum, it will end up being Mozzie Smith as the guy for the Dallas Cowboys. But I think he's going to have to earn his star, so to speak, and earn that role as the Cowboys' number one nose guard. 
Today's Cowboys report is sponsored by Z Biotics. Let's face it, after y'all hit me with a bunch of super chats, I don't always bounce back that well the next day. That is until I found Z Biotics. Z Biotics pre alcohol probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works when you drink alcohol, Alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut, where you need it the most. So drink Zbiotics uh, before drinking alcohol, drink responsibly, and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Zbiotics actually comes in a case like this one. It's got six different bottles, all built like this one. It is the summer, after all, and I like that it's small and easy to transport. That way, wherever you're going, wherever you're out and about, you can bring it with you and set yourself up for success. So go to zbiotics.com slash chatsports or scan the QR code on the screen right now to get 15% off your first order when you use code chatsports at checkout. You can also sign up for a subscription as well, so you can stay prepared no matter the time or occasion. Zbiotics back with a 100% money back guarantee, so if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. That's zbiotics.com slash chatsports, and use the code chatsports to check out for 15% off. Thank you to Zbiotics for sponsoring today's video. Camp battle number three, the linebacker room in general. Uh, you know, Leighton Van Der Esch is clearly one starter. I would bet a good amount of money that Damone Clark ends up being linebacker too, but knock on wood, if that doesn't happen, if there are injuries, and just really who makes the team overall, a lot of uncertainty here. Uh, you got Clark, third round pick, DeMarvian Overshown, Jabril Cox, Devin Harper, Isaiah Land, I think, has a chance to make the team. We'll see if that actually happens. He's UDFA out of Florida AM. Malik Jefferson, but we're going to focus in on those first four names I mentioned, beginning with Damone Clark. Clark, I'll be honest, I was wrong. I did not think that Damone Clark was going to be able to play this season. I did not think he was going to be, or last year, I think he was going to be, be cleared in time. I thought the injury was going to take too long. I was wrong. I'm glad that it ended up happening for Damone Clark, and I think year two, he's primed for a big-time breakout. I am required, per my own contract and rules, I set them, I suppose, to mention Jabril Cox here, so we can do the hashtag Cox Out campaign. Better uh, minicamp OTAs, allegedly, for Jabril Cox this offseason. If that can carry into the preseason, that's a big deal, because I think he is still fighting for a roster spot, and maybe linebacker three duties as well. So you should know what's coming. Spam Cox out in the comments section for Jabril Cox. I don't know how many more of these we'll have. I am worried deep down the Cowboys will take it too. Literally, they'll get Cox out of there, but I digress. Get your hashtag Cox out in the comment section. The linebacker battle continue with Devin Harper. Uh, I think maybe we're sleeping on Devin Harper a little bit. Now, the Cowboys like to come out of Oklahoma State. Didn't play much last year. Missed some time due to injury as well. Uh, but he was not that far off draft pick wise from some other recent success stories, such as a, you know, we're all hyped about Deuce Vaughn, right? Yeah, Devin Harper went, went in the same range. All, we were all pumped with what we got out of Deron Bland, Harper similarish range. Maybe, including myself, we're sleeping on him a little bit. Now, I don't know if it happens in year one, but I do think DeMarvian Overshone is a really good fit for what Dan Quinn wants to do on defense with these athletic run and chase linebackers who have the ability to cover and blitz a little bit. Overshun, of course, the former safety, I think has immense talent. It's a matter of can you maximize it? There are moments that he, the awareness, he's still guessing. He was much better last year, but he needs some more time and some more coaching. Now, we gained 476 subscribers in June. June and July are often our two worst months here because there's nothing going on football-wise. Help us change that. Sub for more free Cowboys videos still going on each and every single day. 
Camp battle number four, the nickel corner. I don't know how much of a battle is really going on here. I think this is Deron Bland's job to lose. And some will tell you, oh, you don't ever want to have your corner lose his job or a player lose his job due to injury. Kind of think that happened with Jordan Lewis, though. Uh, I think Deron Bland was so impressive. He's the favorite there. But there are other guys fighting, not just to start it at nickel corner, but maybe be your top backup at the position. Let's start with the best one. That is Deron Bland, who, as a rookie, shockingly impressive. The completion percentage was a little bit high. A lot of that stuff was some short stuff that I'm not as concerned about allowing because it's the nickel corner. Normally, nickel corners allow higher completion rates, fewer yards per catch because it's just not as downfield as much. Um, but I want to let that drop a little bit. I think the INTs could regress a little bit as well. From Jordan Lewis, or now to Jordan Lewis, I should say, there's some money to be saved if he's healthy. Lewis, I think, will begin camp on the pup list. I would be a little bit surprised if he was active week one. He's made comments about his new foot, quote unquote, which just like, hey, that concerns me a wee bit. Uh, so, but he's a veteran. He can maybe even play safety for you if you had to. We'll see how training camp recovery rehab comes along. I'm also going to mention Israel Mukwamu here, who I, I liked him a lot more than most people, frankly, coming out of South Carolina. Um, I had him graded out like two rounds higher, or at least a round and a half higher than I had Nishan Wright graded. Got a chance, finally, last year, and impressed against the Bucks in particular. The issue is, it's a little bit trickier to find a way to get him playing time with what they're set up to do with the safety and cornerback depth that they have. He might just be your super sub at nickel, safety, outside corner, etc. And I do want to mention Kelvin Joseph as well. Uh, Bossman Fat is fighting for his life right now on the roster. Uh, he is in danger of being cut. The Cowboys, I know this uh, pretty, pretty good, were really upset about the way he played last year. Uh, there is some frustration towards Kelvin Joseph. He did not grade out very well internally for the Cowboys among players. He was... He was near the bottom, frankly. Uh, he's in now at nickel corner. Maybe he can impress in camp and in the preseason. But overall, what is your confidence level in the Cowboys defense? Scale it from 1 to 10. 1 on the low end, 10 on the high end. Get those votes in right now. Finally, I will cheat again and just mention some other depth spots. You know, the defensive tackle spot. Who gets cut at corner? I should start there. I'll go in the order that I laid out the script in. Who gets cut at corner? You have too many guys right now. Is it Joseph? Is it Nashawn Wright? Is it CJ Goodwin? You're not going to keep all three of those guys barring other injuries. That makes it significant uh, from that perspective. The final defensive tackle spot, you're going to have Mozzie, Hankins, Osa, I think Junior Fajoko, I think Chauncey Golston makes it. Do you keep Golston over Neville Gallimore? Does Gallimore end up making this Cowboys team? And finally, can any UDFAs make the Cowboys roster? Uh, I don't mind Miles Brooks, but corner is a tough spot to make it there. Can Isaiah Land emerge? Can one of those UDFA edges, Ty Tyus Wheat maybe? That'll be worth watching in camp this year.